This is the Helping Hand TV show which needs the voice of ability and air for persons with disability. My mandate is to prove that disability indeed is not inability. So walk, walk me through it. When you were called up for the gold medal, it was full of tears of joy. When I look at where I started, my goodness. And now God has brought me to this extent, my goodness. representing Ghana with a gold medal. My goodness. I thank God. Six months, you sleep and you wake up and most of the black in your eye is gone and your, all your eyes are white. Any able person out there who has the means, they should join hands to support someone like you because you are a voice for the voice. <laughs> like I say, you are welcome. Welcome to my world where disability is not inability. Hello and welcome to another exciting and definitely inspiring edition of the Helping Hand TV show. As you know, the Helping Hand is an initiative of the H4P organization where we seek to throw the spotlight on the abilities of persons with disability. And like I say, you are welcome. Welcome to my world where disability is not inability. Special thanks to DV Unlimited, Company Limited, SNR Company Limited for sponsoring this program. And special thanks to you for tuning in. You are with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. I'll go for a quick commercial break. When I come back, I'll introduce you to my exciting guest. Stay tuned. The Helping Hand TV show will be right back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. And today, I want to introduce you to someone with so much ability. Some people call her the greatest friend. Ah. Others call her the sweet companion. Ah. And others still call her the faithful worker. Ah. She is dependable, reliable, and adorable. Ah. And she's committed to lending you a helping hand anytime, anywhere. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome DV Cleaners. Ah. DV Cleaners Alata Stamina Shower Gels. DV Cleaners Aloe Vera Shower Gels DV Cleaners Body Lotions DV Cleaners Hair Shampoo DV Cleaners Hair Conditioners DV Cleaners Liquid Detergents DV Cleaners Toilet Cleaners DV Cleaners Floor Cleaners and DV Cleaners Cake Soups For bulk purchases, call us on plus 233-278-308-246 or plus 233-244 467-326 DV Cleaners, one of the top most made in Ghana products, proudly Ghanaian. And so remember that anytime you purchase any of the DV Cleaners range of products, you are lending a helping hand to a person with disability and you are supporting H4P organization's special advocacy for persons with disability. DV Cleaners! Nature's finest touch! Welcome back. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end, saith the Lord. This is the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. And I have another exciting episode for you today. My guest is inspirational. My guest is motivational. My guest has seen it all, um, almost done it all. My guest <laughs> has so much confidence and he's ready to share his life with us. Um, he's a co-founder of a sporting club that advocates for persons with disability. My guest used to be a hunter. My guest used to be a farmer. My guest now is a para sports athlete and has represented Ghana in several competitions and has won several medals. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome my very special guest, McLean Achu Gigiano. McLean, <laughs> thank you so much. And let's go straight to your story. Let's start from your story. Um, how did you begin your journey in the disability world? How did you get your disability? All right, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, it was at the age of nine when okay. uh, I had a headache, so I complained. I complained to my parents and then they took me to the hospital. So a doctor wrongly injected my vein and then I, after the injection, I just got paralyzed, could not walk again. 
So we have been to churches, uh, we have prayed. Very First of all, hard. You, you were nine years old. Yes, I was at the age of nine. You have walked, you have talked. Yes. You have friends. I've been to the farm with my dad, my mom. My goodness. And at that time, farming was what we were doing. Okay. So usually when we are going to the farm, I, I was the one that carries the water okay. on, on my head. And then we go, as a little boy, I'll be given a small portion to eat. Wow. Uh -huh. so, and then you have headache, you go to the hospital, yeah. and a doctor wrongly injects you wrongly. wrongly. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. It, it almost looks like um, every time on my show, that has been the narrative. Um, a medical personnel will do something wrongly, this, that, this, that. At that age of nine, yeah. all of a sudden, you cannot walk again. Yeah. How were you feeling, and how did you handle it? Okay, so at that time, you know, the general perception of the public, mm. when you, like, uh, like a mom gives birth to a child or something happens to you yeah. in a family, they yeah. think that maybe this uh, is a case. Usually your family is cursed or maybe you've done something wrong mm. as a result that uh, you've had this punishment. So it was very, very bad. Like my mother, my parents, like even the kids around that I play with, it was very, very tough because nobody had wanted to associate uh, him or herself to me again. But that, that's, but that's so strange. Yeah. Here you are, they play with you, they do everything with you. Yeah. Then the same person gets into a disability and cannot be talked to. You can't come close to the person. Yeah. So you became a case overnight? Uh, I was really rejected from, my, from, the, from the house. I have been in an uncompleted trying to hustle. But during all this time, I would say that the Lord was with me. My God. Because I, I don't know, I never gave up. Mm. After this thing happened, we have been to hospitals, but I still go to the riverside, use this line and hook, trap fish, take it to the market, sell, and then get something little. And I was no, using no, it to. No, no, McLean, slow down. Slow really, down. <laughs> yeah, slow yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. You, you are paralyzed um, in your lower limbs, yeah. so you can't walk. So I those times you were crawling? I was crawling as a means of movement. So and you would go to the riverside yeah. crawling? So I, I crawl. I can crawl, like given a, a distance like almost about five kilometers, I can crawl in and out. Are you and serious? Yes, I can crawl. <laughs> those days, that was the means of movement, so I, I could crawl. As far as I'd want, I want to go any distance, I will have to crawl. Was it not dangerous? Yeah, it was dangerous, but I would say God was with me. Maybe God knew the reason why wow. uh, he brought me into this state. And I think those days, I, I, I do regret, but I think it's the doing of the Lord. And I don't regret again. Wow. Yeah. It's, um, it's fascinating. Fascinating. Your story is so much of an inspiration. Yeah. Let's talk about your education. Um, so you, you become paralyzed, you can't walk again. Did it affect your education? Yeah, so those times, it really affected my education. Mm. After, after 95, okay. uh, some benevolent people introduced my dad to the orthopedic training center. Okay. So they took me there, I, they did operation on my two legs. Okay. And there, it's like they started teaching us some. Um, Petty, petty stuff. So after the oper operation, I stayed at the orthopedic training center for two years. Then the head of the center mm. linked me to a school closer at Insawan, which was uh, Prince Boati Memorial School. Wow. So I started in class two. Wow. And then when I started, I picked very quick because uh, like you were when they contacted then? Yeah, so I was growing okay. like 16, 17. I was. Growing, so I was really fast. Mm. Uh, so I did not even go to class one. Wow. They just put me to class two, and then in class I was when they are counting among two, I was very good. Wow. I was part of it, wow. and that was something that was pushing me. Even even though when I when I like my movement was crawling, mm. and none of the students would like to come close to me. Yeah. Fine, you didn't come close to me, but when it comes to class. I'm doing very well. And sometimes you like to come to me for an explanation or to teach you something. I hear you. And that was how. <laughs> I, was I hear you. So you, you finished primary school. Yeah. And from there, 
you went on? So, uh, Prince Bwati Memorial School was primary G GSS. Okay. Uh -huh. So, after the primary, I enrolled into the GSS too. So, I completed my basic education with a memorial institution. Yeah. In, in your story, your family rejected you. Yeah. I don't get it. Okay, so... They have been with you for nine years. Yes. You become paralyzed because a doctor um, injected you wrongly. Yeah. And they reject you. Yeah. So, uh, when I say my family rejected me, it's like, I'll say from my, from my mom's side, like my, my mom, after my disability, my mom left the marriage. My God. And so, all the burden was on my dad. My dad never gave up on me, but like also also had the courage that like i could i could school mm. and then become somebody in future others were saying that so after my disability now all i can learn is probably becoming a shoemaker or weaving basket to be sold in the market but i was telling my dad that when he first to take me to school i really do very well so it's like my dad also had this spirit mm. and so tried and then with the help of others, uh, I got enrolled in Prince Barton Memorial. So before your disability room. at nine, mm -hmm. what did you have in mind to be in the future? I was always saying that I want to become a bank manager. <laughs> 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 Work in the bank. Why and, uh, bank manager? Yeah, because money. like what happened was that it looks like all the time people say that this, they tell my dad, this your son will grow and become a great person. Mm. So they were calling me, I choose the great, I choose the great, I wow. choose the great. So like you become a bank manager. When somebody asks you, what would you become in future? I say you want to become a bank manager, work in the bank. Wow. And what they were saying is that like usually people like us, mm. because we, we usually stay at one place, we can work in the bank, mm. become a teller. So mm. it's like I had an interest and mm. then also I was also working at it. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so so um, now you have to continue schooling. Um, your family really not supportive. How were you going to have funds, um, money to go through school? How did you manage it? Manage so uh, what I'll say is that uh, we had some benevolent people who were okay. also donating one or two staff to my dad. Okay. And aside that, to my dad met the mistress okay. and then explained the situation. Mm. So the mistress gave my dad half payment of the school fees. Wow. And so my dad was just talking. <laughs> so it wasn't easy, but as I'm, as I'm saying, it was the doing of the Lord. Mm. Because at that time, if I could tell you that I would even complete the basic education and then further mm. on the more serious need, I never, I never saw myself there. So it was just God who was taking me bit by bit, bit by bit. And his, I'm, his, I'm watching his you and I'm just admiring you. you. You actually finished the polytechnic? Yes. I... I, I as a graduate now. Yeah. What did you read in the polytechnic? So I did accounting. My business. Wow. My business. Wow. wow. <laughs> but actually, the great. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you were moving towards being a bank manager. But right now in Ghana, we don't know you as a bank manager. Yeah, yeah. We know you as a representative of Ghana, Ghana yeah. in para sports. Yes. Um, what changed? Why, why did you move, um, shift from accounting, heading towards the bank? All right. So what I would say is that after completing Accra Polytechnic and then I finished with my national service, mm. uh, I wrote several applications to institutions uh, to get employed. Some called me for interview, I passed, but the only uh, thing they used to disqualify me was that I have qualified. In fact, even if they will select uh, the, uh, among, like, they need, they need only one person to be selected, I'm the one. But the unfortunate thing is that their institution is not accessible. They don't have lived as a result. Uh, they are sorry, they can't employ me, I should try somewhere else. And on a more serious note, I've tried several but institutions. That's, that's discrimination. Yeah. Yeah, but ah, 
What would you say? They sometimes say uh, the buildings, especially the ministries, were built in the olden days during Kwame Nkrumah's <laughs> regime. So <laughs> it's only, always full with steps and staircase and stuff, but all the same. I said, okay, fine. Uh -huh. So but you were going from company to company, employment yeah, issues? Going and to the ministries and other stuff. Some will tell you that we'll call you, we have your CV. When there's a vacancy, we'll call you. But still, uh, Aside that, I will never give up. I have to get something going. So it got to a time that you've written several applications, you're not getting it. So there was a need to have something to be doing. That was the spot. So it was when... I, I will come to that, but I'm, right. I want to get it. So you are writing several applications. They, they call you. They don't give you the job yeah. because of your disability. Um, they will put it that they are not accessible. Yeah, um, the, are, the infrastructures are not accessible. And you will not give up. Yeah, I will never give up. As a matter of fact, even since I had my disability, I have never given up. Yeah, I've always tried to do something for myself. So, yeah. Well, this is the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. This is incredible. Yeah. I have actually the greats with me. I'll go for a quick commercial break. I'll be right back. Still to come on the Helping Hand TV show. I had to do something to support my godmother. I wasn't a burden on my mom and I was really forceful. When you see me making an effort like this, then it should tell you that I'm very forceful. I have never given up, but I'm still pressing. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. I have McLean Achu Gigenio with me, and he's an inspiration. He never gives up. Never gives up. We, we are heading towards what you do now, what um, has taken you all over the world now. But um, you were a hunter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know you don't give up, but yeah. please, I don't get it. Yeah. You were crawling yeah. and you were hunting. Yeah. How? Okay, so uh, when I had my disability uh, at the age of nine, after that, like let's say from the age 15 going, mm. it got to a time I could not depend only on my parents. And because I started with my dad farming, farming, farming goes with hunting. Sometimes when you okay. farm and then rodents, uh, uh, trooping into your crops, you have to set some traps to mm. get them away. So I was doing those petty petty stuff. I set traps, and then when I get a game, I go to the market to sell them. Sometimes to, I trap fishes at the river bank and then go to uh, sell them. So it got to a time that I realized sometimes when I go to the bush, I see the animals, but I I I only had the option of setting traps for them. So at the age of 18, I pleaded with my godmother to help me acquire a gun with the lances so that when I go to the bush and I see the animals like this, I could shoot them. <laughs> so <laughs> it, was, it was a scary idea. Obviously. Yeah, it might, she was scared, but she advised that, okay, fine, for now, I'm too young to be handling that. So what she would do is that uh, she would get me more traps. Mm. So when I set more traps, I can get more games. So I can <laughs> but so, I, I saw a picture of yours yeah. with a gun yes, across your shoulder. Sure. So you eventually had a gun. So I eventually had a gun. And that was, clean. At a, that was when I was in <laughs> SS. And then it really helped because uh, Pastor... It really helped, but it... <laughs> 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 It was dangerous. Yeah, it was dangerous, but I, I, I never had a motive of probably using it for anything but, but just to go to the bush. Yeah, no, not for anything then, bad, but yeah. you are hunting an animal, you shoot the animal, um, the animal you miss, and the animal now charges on you. What would you do? Okay, so I would say it was just this mere rodent, grass cutter, squirrel, rabbit, okay. uh, antelope, and then maybe bush cat or bush dog and those stuff. Hey. <laughs> yeah. that, that is not me. I know you are actually the great. Yeah. But that is not me. Eh? Yeah. And you were killing antelopes, all these. Yeah. 
how did you learn to fire a gun? So, like my my dad usually use a gun, and sometimes when we come back, uh, he teaches us how to use it. But it was only my senior brothers that were using it. But I had all the clues what to do. <laughs> and, so, yeah, when I acquired it, even my dad was shocked that I acquired a gun and I was using it. Wow. So I once brought the gun and then the lances to him. And one day I went to the bush and then I had a good game and I brought it. Then my dad really saw that it's in the blood. <laughs> <laughs> so that it's wow. In the blood, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find out where your confidence comes from because yeah. um, your condition demands a lot of carefulness. Honestly. But you didn't seem to be too careful. Yeah. Why? So, uh, what I would say is that uh, I don't know where that came from, but it was from God. I go to the bush alone. Sometimes I see snakes, I see scorpions, but I've been through bush all of my life, but I've never had a, uh, been bitten by a snake. And I say it is the doing of God. So, so, it's like it was God that instilled this confidence in me. The confidence to persevere. The confidence to break through the odd. The confidence not to like look down upon myself, but to say I've got some potential in me and I can do things through Christ who strengthens me. Wow. You, you, are, you are such an inspiration. Such an inspiration. Um, I guess your um, hunting abilities and all that um, made you develop this very strong upper body I'm seeing. Honestly, honestly. So it worked out for good? Yeah, it worked for good because if I could crawl almost about five kilometers in and out, wow. you could just imagine my biceps and stuff wow. growing very strong. So uh, I relocated with my godmother. Okay. When I was in Prince Wattin to Dodoa, okay. and that was when I met the regional basketball coordinator, Elvis Kosi Alupi, who once saw me from the bush with a gun strapped on my head. He was saying that, e, where do you live? And he, what he said was that he saw that I've got a lot of potential because with a gun strapped at my back, with some meat at my back, crawling with my hand, I've got the upper body to do this uh, disability sports. And so he followed me to my mom, and that was when he introduced me to the sports. I will talk about that, but All I right. have a question. Okay. <laughs> Achieve the great. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, wouldn't it be a bit um, shameful that you are crawling and um, your friends meet you and on top of that you have a gun strapped by your shoulder um, you are holding some game and you see your friends you've been to school yeah. um isn't it a bit too shameful apostle please uh, by then i was in ss okay. and i know where i'm coming from so i cut my coat according to my size oh. i don't compare myself to other people and i had to do something to support my godmother so that i wouldn't be a liability to her so sometimes when I go to the bush and I get a game, we sell it and it helps us too. Some too, we use the meat, meat for domestic consumption. Wow. And I thought with that, I wasn't a burden on my mom. Wow. And I was really forceful. I also used to prove to this case that we have young guys who haven't been to school. All they do is that they're still around. Mm. And so if you see me and making an effort, did. sure, when you see me making an effort like this, then it should tell you that I'm very forceful. Wow. I have never given up, but I'm still pressing. Yeah. I like that. I like that. So you, you met um, Elvis. Yeah. Elvis is a good friend of mine. Yes. Um, and he introduced you to this. Sports. When he told your mother, yeah. what was her reaction? Because um, then you are going to go away from <laughs> your godmother. No, so what happened was that... Uh, I had to leave Dodoa every Saturday morning to Accra to join the team to train. And then after, I returned to Dodoa. So I would say now the sports has taken me 
more from hunting <laughs> <laughs> because like now i train mm. basically every day and uh, preparing for other tournaments and mm. stuff so it was all good when you started learning um, which one do you start with the, is it the basketball or the, the basketball racing it the basketball yeah it was the basketball um, how was it like for you because you are just coming from crawling yeah you're going to sit in the wheelchair, wheelchair. Yes. yeah um you're not used to it yeah you're going to play sports with it yeah that would be too much yeah so my first day at the lebanon house in accra mm. to play the wheelchair basketball when i got there like i sat down for about an hour looking mm. at what my colleagues were doing before i was given a chair to see if i could also do some wow i said to myself that I could do this thing and even do it better than what they are doing because I have got the upper <laughs> muscles. I only have to know how to use the chair. Amazing. And, and truly so you just sat down and watched them. Yeah. And, and that was it. And that was it. So I was giving the ball and I was really trying. At the beginning, for the first and second week, yeah. I was struggling, even though I was trying to get a rhythm. It's oh, usual yeah. for every beginning. But I got into it. After three months, I was part of the national team. I'm 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 going to go for a break and when I come we'll talk more about that. Yeah. In three months yeah. you joined the national, the national team. team. That is success. Yes. Well, it's time for 60 Second Success with Apostle. I'll go for that break. When I come back, my guest, Gachu the Great, will be here. <laughs> Welcome to 60 Second Success with Apostle. Today I have a question for you. Are you committed in making your life better or you are just interested in making your life better? What is the difference you would ask? Well, the difference is this. When you are interested in making your life better, you do what everybody does, but only with convenience. Immediately you face a challenge. You want to give up. You have so many excuses as to why something didn't work. But when you are committed to making your life better, you do what everybody does, but you go beyond your convenience. You excuse excuses. You don't play the blame game. You make sure that nothing happens except your success. You are so focused. You see, when you are committed, it makes you go beyond the extra mile. You make sure that at every point in time, success is the only thing. I think that getting committed is better than getting interested. And I think you should do so. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability on it for persons with disability. I have Achu the Great with me. And he's doing incredible things, telling us incredible things. In less than three months, or just about three months, you joined the national team. Um, Tell me about some of the things um, that have happened. I, mean, I know you've, done, you've gone for tournaments, you've won medals. Now let's talk about you. Let's blow your horn a bit. Oh, okay. So when I joined the wheelchair basketball, I had the opportunity to be introduced to other para sports uh, disciplines. Okay. So from the basketball, I you, had... You were a, not satisfied with the basketball. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I had opportunity to do the hand cycling. And then okay. I also had opportunity to do the wheelchair racing. And so, like, that was when I met Raphael okay. Ocho in Kegbe, okay. who said, okay, fine, with my capability and upper body, I had the same disability with him, so I could do wheelchair racing. What was the it. difference between the hand cycling and the yeah. wheelchair racing? Okay, so the hand cycling is you cycle in front of you like this. Okay. But with the wheelchair racing, you lie on your legs, okay. and then you paddle with your arms backwards. Wow. Uh -huh. So, so all the years that God watched you crawl for miles, mm -hmm. he was preparing you for this. Well, honestly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happened was that uh, when Raphael introduced me to the wheelchair racing, it looks like I fell more in love with the wheelchair racing than the basketball. Okay. So, I joined Raphael training. He brought a roller to Accra, and I've been training on it. When he goes to Sunyane, I'll leave uh, the center at Adabraka, go to Airwax Sports Stadium, 
and I'll be training on my own. Wow. So it took me just a year to join the national team to represent Ghana in Maputo. Wow. And so I, I had the opportunity to represent Ghana using future racing. So from there... So you were in the national team for basketball? Basketball then and racing. wheelchair racing. Wow. So then I said to myself, okay, fine. I'll draw basketball and then focus with the wheelchair racing. <laughs> and it's been awesome. Wow. Uh, I say to the glorification of God mm. that wheelchair racing has taken me all over the world. Mm. I've wow. represented Ghana in the USA, Portugal, mm. Italy, Japan. Mm. Name the countries. We have been there. Discussing. We have been there. We have been there. Wow. Wow. The first time you traveled out of the country, yeah. um, how was that experience like for you? Yeah, it was nice because it was a very big exposure that I have. Even though I did not compete, I was there to witness what mm. my senior athletes like Rafael Bucho and Kebe and Felix Obin and other colleagues were doing. So it really motivated me and all I said to myself was that I have to train very hard yeah. so I can be like them. Wow. So I trained and I have been to South Africa mm. and I won a gold medal in a 42.2 kilometer marathon. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The following year well, to me. Was, that, was that a very difficult um, competition for you? Yeah, it was a very difficult one, but I just listened to an advice Raphael gave me. Mm that uh, I should capitalize on my descent and then draft behind the number one. And that was what I did. So when I went, I was behind the number one and it got to a time, uh, it's like he was tired, <laughs> but I, I had more destined. So I breaked away, to... yeah, overtook him. Wow. Went all out and then left him about three kilometers. Wow. And that was <laughs> So, walk, walk me through it. When you were called up for the gold medal, yeah, it was it was full of tears of joy. Yeah. I, yeah. I was I was crying. I was crying. The organizers didn't know the reason why I was crying, and I told them that when I look at where I started, my goodness, and now God has brought me to this extent, representing Ghana with the gold medal. I thank God. Ah. So, it, was, it was so inspirational. It was so inspirational. Now, from the hunter boy, yeah, becoming a sports you are personality, an icon. Yeah. You are yes. a role model. Yeah. The whole world was watching, and you took yeah. gold. Yes, incredible. And I took gold. I the also, next, the next year, something happened. Yeah. So the next year, too, I went with uh, Raphael to the United States for an IPC sanction event, okay. which was going to qualify me to the Brazil 2016 Olympics. And so there too, I won three gold medals. Oh my God. <laughs> and so tell, tell me, so the, the three gold medals in which discipline? So I, I, won, uh, I won in 100 meters, gold in 100 meters, gold in 200 meters, and gold in 400 meters. Yeah, we had countries like uh, Canada. Th this is this is really wow. ability in disability. Yeah. This is really ability in disability. Yeah. And, and and some of the countries you are competing against? Yeah, it was Canada, USA, Japan, wow. Great Britain. And these countries yeah. have been doing this for a long, a long time. time. They yeah. have the facilities. Yes. Yeah. They have all that. Yeah. And you just came from Ghana. Yeah. I think it's the doing of the world. Yeah. So um, you meet people from um, Canada, yeah. um, the US, um, yeah. Italy, and all that. Yeah. And when you are competing with them, I'm thinking that naturally, um, a hunter boy from Ghana, yeah. you should feel a bit intimidated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you see, uh, I have got a good role model. What I would say about Rafael is that. Buche always encouraged me. Wow. He tells me that McLean, there's nothing that you cannot do. Wow. 
the fact that maybe we might go through sponsorships challenges does not mean we cannot do it. And now, to prove people wrong in our country, mm. we have to produce results. Exactly. Yeah. And all the time, I always pray that God, let me image the winner. Let me perform well so I can use my, my performance to inspire other persons with disabilities. Incredible. Uh, so I go all out. I go all out. And sometimes it is close, but God gives me the victory. Sometimes to I make second but it is still a victory. So after three gold medals, yeah. you were ready for the next event? Yeah, so I was supposed to attend another event in Switzerland okay. to be able to be part of the team Ghana that will be representing Ghana in Brazil. But when we came back to the country, uh, our leader said there was no sponsorship to take us to that one. Apparently, like, it was Raphael and I that mobilized our own sponsorship and then we went for that event in the USA. So we were counting on the country to take us to Switzerland so I could. I was just left with the seconds to reduce on my time to be able to make the qualification time. But all the same, God is good. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you are still with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. This is a Helping Hand TV show. I am with McLean Achu Gigeno. He is an incredible person. It's time for feedback segment. I need to hear from you. Thank you so much for all the feedback you send us. Um, what do you think about my guests? Let me know. I'm going for the feedback segment. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome to the feedback segment on the Helping Hand TV show. We appreciate comments you send on our social media platforms, the calls you make to us, and mails we receive from you. We will do our best to address your concerns. Stay tuned. Feedback from Barbara Martinson, Sakumun, Accra, Ghana. I really like your story. Medical negligence should not be taken more seriously. And if we are a serious nation, we will begin to pay attention to healthcare in the country. We are happy for this show because it creates a platform to bring out some of these healthcare issues. Ghana set up. Kudos Apostle Charles Hackman and the H4P organization. You are really doing well for this country. You can send your comments or questions to our email, helpinghandshow at gmail.com. You can also send an SMS or WhatsApp message to plus 233-209-555-777. Or you can follow us on Facebook, The Helping Hand TV Show. Thank you. One of the organizations on Mubua Helping Hand TV Show, um, A.R. Sorry, be a friend of Wet Fire Generation Ministries. Um, many only there's no exercise and say about program also um, and they have good news for you um, they are willing to support they are willing to support um, especially Akalano and like all the things you talked about um, wet fire generation ministries um, almost on the bois every now and then whatever has to be done they come in. at age 4 p we love to put smiles on the faces of persons with disability at far city chapel we love to make you smile at age 4 p we love to wipe the tears of persons with disability at far city chapel we love to give you experiences that will fill you with tears of joy at age 4 p we love to lend a helping hand to families of persons with disability at Far City Chapel, we love to help families grow in the grace and love of God. At age 4 p, we love to empower children and young people with disability. At Far City Chapel, we love to train children in the way they should go, so that when they grow, they will not depart from it. At age 4 p, we love to give to persons with disability. At Far City Chapel, we love to give. Surely, some things are meant to be together. Fire City Chapel stands together with H4P organization. Together we stand. Fire City Chapel and H4P bringing dignity to disability. Welcome back. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much.
so very much. Welcome back to the Healthy Hand TV show. I have my very special guest with me. Um, I choose. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank of you course, too. you are still doing great things. Yeah. Let's talk about um, para sports in Ghana. Yeah. Um, how can we make it better? Yeah. Because you are there. Yeah. Um, you are achieving all these great things. Sometimes um, you can't move on because there is no support. Yeah. How do we make it? better because we can do a lot for Ghana through that right honestly yeah uh, what I'm saying is that a country like Brazil mm. what they do for persons with disability is to encourage all of them for them to join para sports because the government invests a lot into para sports wow. in their country and that makes them to become have uh, some sort of dignity yeah and then some sort of employment yeah because they are being paid and then they are being taken care of and I think it's one of the things that Ghana can adopt. Mm. Really pay attention to para sports such that when somebody is begging on the street yeah. and he sees us or yeah. some of us doing para sports and yeah. doing, making it, then we can use our achievements to encourage them. encourage them to join the sports such that they will stop begging on the streets. Let's look at some of the things um, practically yeah. we can do to help um, the sports um, as a country, yeah. what can we do? Yeah, what, what I would say is that like sponsorship aspect uh, for, for the sports is, is one key thing. But getting equipment for the athletes and at least for the training, for yeah? the training getting equipment and also some monthly allowance for the athletes to be depending on that to train very hard mm. such that they will be able to perform very well. In competitions how, how long yeah. um, would it take somebody watching us now let's say somebody's on the streets yeah. begging yeah. and is listening to this interview yeah. and decides that okay so enough with begging yeah. I want to also become great like at you the great yeah. <laughs> how can the person be part of para sports yeah so we have the Ghana Society of the physically disabled office at Accra Adabraka Okay. At the and rehabilitation center. Yeah, the rehabilitation center. Okay. And when they get there, there are so many associations within the compound. Okay. And so they can join. They can join the association. And then when they come into the association, there are so many exposures that comes. So it's through that that they can get enrolled into the sports. And so you necessarily have to be part of the federation. Federation. Okay before you'll be able to do the sports. Wow. Aside that, to maybe when they come to the National Sports Authority and then ask uh, the times that uh, we train, okay. when they come meet some of us, we could inspire them mm. and then show them the way how to join the sports and then become successful with it. Um, one of the days I interviewed Rafael yeah. and he was talking about the fact that um, disability sports is getting Ghana more medals yeah. than football. Honestly. <laughs> But we are pumping more money into football yeah. and leaving disability sports. Yeah. This is a very big question that we always uh, ask our leaders. That why is it that all the time we make the mark even more than the so-called able-bodied that they say they are able-bodied. Mm. But why is it that still attention is not given to us? But when you ask them, uh, they have not got, got any concrete stuff to tell you. So what we will do is that we will still try to keep pressing on, mm. fighting uh, the vision, mm. trying to use the sports to like, do a lot of sensitization, mm. like inspire people, let the people know that like, disability sports is one of the major ways to probably encourage persons with disabilities. I'll go country. for a, a break. When I come back, we'll yeah. talk about your organization. Yeah. You have an organization that um, uses sports, sports yeah. to encourage um, young people yes. because um, we need to grow another generation Understood. that can take over from you. Understood. We'll talk about that. Okay. It's time for music. So let's cross over to Elom for a sport of music and I'll be right back with Achu. The great. Dark 
So welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. I have my very special guest with me, McLean Achu Didienyo. Thank you so much. Um, you are helping people. You are motivating people. You are encouraging young ones to take after you. Um, let's talk about Go Get Them Club. Talk to me about it. All right. So Go Get Them Wheelchair Racing Club is a club that Raphael and myself uh, decided we would bring on board mm. to use the sports to change the life of other persons with disabilities wow. in the remote areas. Mm. So after London 2012, uh, I planned with Raphael that uh, it, we should come out, like the club should be a club that will be giving back to the society. Yeah. Because after we have won all these medals, we need to advocate to fight for the right of other persons with disabilities who mm. are doing sports mm. because we have seen it all. And so that was the reason why we came out with uh, the Go Get Em Wheelchair Racing Club. What is the feedback like? Okay, so now we have about eight athletes and wow. out of the eight athletes, we have four that has represented Ghana with medals. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. So, so, so you are creating another generation that will yeah, get medals for country, Ghana? country, honestly. Wow. So uh, the first two people that we recruited was Yakubu Abukari and then Aisha Tuseidu. Uh, we sent uh, Yakubu Abukari to South Africa in 2015 and he was a bronze medal. Wow. That very year to Aisha Tuseidu won the ladies division, mm. the 42.2 kilometer marathon. Gold the medal? Gold medal. Wow. Yeah. And so, it's a defending champion. Yeah. Wow. Then go get them. You are doing incredible things. Yeah. Um, but let me find out from you. Um, just between me and you. Honestly. Just between me and you. All right. <laughs> With all these medals, yeah. does it mean you are very rich? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm, I'm rich, but God has been good. Mm. God has been good to me. Because... Uh, Usually, when you win a medal and then you bring it to your country, your country is supposed to honor you. Yeah. But we don't get such things. Sometimes, when we, for instance, the three gold medal that I won like this. That was incredible. Raf Raphael also won uh, silver and then a gold in his division. Wow. We went to the Minister of Youth and Sports, then uh, Neil Ante van der Poel, presented it to him, but... Like, there was nothing. <laughs> but all the same, uh, we are not looking at that aspect. At least, once we have life, and we are able to sometimes maneuver. We are, we are making Ghana proud. Yeah. And uh, so that should be the benefit that, like, we should be getting. So at least we could get something to also give back to the club that we are. But aside that, we are also trying to use the sports to inspire them that, Look, you can do it, and at least the respect alone and the exposure alone that you get could even give you another opportunity yeah. in your life. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be a follower of Christ, uh, it is not only in preaching church. the gospel, yeah. but how can you Im impact your fellow brothers? And because so, if what, you are able what you to, what you are doing now, there are yeah. some mothers watching, and they know that their child with disability has a future. Yeah, honestly, yeah. and. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Just before we go, um, you are married? Yeah, Apostle, by the grace, I'm married. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the name of your wife? Yeah, Vida Duamapo. Wow. Yeah. How is married life? Yeah, by the grace, uh, God has been good. I'm sure your wife will be very proud of you. Honestly, sure. All right, all right. So I'm with Achu the Great, and it's a freestyle segment. Um, <laughs> the freestyle segment is a segment on the show where I allow my guests to do anything freestyle. They can sing, they can dance, they can not hunt. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot hunt. They cannot hunt. <laughs> but actually, it's a freestyle segment. Um, yeah. What are you doing for me, freestyle? Oh, okay. So I. I am a motivational speaker. Great. So I'll use this segment to send a message to the public and then the entire world. Go ahead. So what I want to say is that uh, we have got able-bodied which have legs. They have got two eyes. They have got two hands, but they are not making it. Yeah. So when you look at my life story, starting from 
how I started hunting, persevering. I have never given up in life. So what I want to say is that if you're in life and you're facing some sort of challenge, mm. know that that challenge that you're going through, it is not permanent. Yeah. It is temporary. Wow. With God on your side, with a little effort that you do, God is going to see you through. Amazing. So never and ever give up. If I, McLean Achu, has never given up in life. Thank you very wow. much. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, you heard it all from the guy who has seen it all, almost done it all, um, has farmed, has hunted, um, and is hunting for medals now. And um, is doing so much, so much, so much. Um, it's a game segment. It's a game segment on the show. Um, at the beginning, um, we gave numbers to every member of the audience. Um, they have been waiting for this time. Um, my guest is going to make one person so happy, a lucky winner. Um, we have a gift from DV Unlimited, Company Limited. Um, if my guest chooses your number, you will be smiling. <laughs> so let the games begin. Let the games begin. So you close your eyes and you shuffle the ball. Then All you right. pick one. Okay. And then we see who wins All the right. gift. <laughs> Yes. So pick one ball. Great. So the lucky number for today is number 17. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can tell my audience went into a shock. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So McLean, you do us the honest and right. you present it. Um, to our lucky one. Please, can you clap? <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> all right. All right. So um, we have a lucky winner, but please don't be sad. Um, every member of the audience is going to walk away with a gift from H4P organization. So, <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, especially to my very special guest, um, McLean. He just fascinates me. His story is so inspirational, and I'm glad I know him. Um, thank you for sharing your life with us, McLean. Um, thank you to Wet Fire Generation Ministries. They have been part of my studio audience today. Um, I'm so grateful, and I cannot end without talking about my crew. Thank you so much. Thank you for making this possible. Thank you, DV Unlimited Company Limited. Thank you, SNR Company Limited, for bringing us this program. Um, you have been with me, the voice of ability and air for persons with disability. I'll come your way again next week. And to then remember that disability is, is not, not inability. inability. God bless you. <laughs>